I just personally think he should go to California and just stay there with her, you know, and just enjoy the Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive. Mm -hmm. And I think just putting the Green Bay Packers behind him would be a good decision. What's going on, guys? This is Brian Jones from PopCulture.com. And joining me today is one of the all-time NFL greats, former member of the Minnesota Vikings and Seattle Seahawks. He's a member of the 1990s All-Decade Team and the 100th Anniversary All-Time Team, Pro Football Hall of Famer, John Randall. John, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Doing great, Brian. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. No problem at all. So I wanted to start off with this first. Uh, you have teamed up with Sleep Number. Do something really cool. It's called the Sleep 30 Challenge. And it's pretty much just promoting uh, good quality sleep, not just for athletes, but for everyone. Uh, how did you get involved with Sleep Number? Well, Sleep, uh, uh, sleep Number, three, uh, I basically said like this, Sleep Number is based out of uh, Minneapolis. And I live here yeah. in Minneapolis. And uh during the Super Bowl, I had a chance to go by there and to just check the beds out. And I was, um, say, not believing it, but when I laid down on the bed one day, man, it was unbelievable. And I've been convinced. And for me, sleep is one of the easiest ways to improve your health. And that's why I partnered up with them. And, you know, we have over 2,000 NFL players using sleep number 360 smart bed and I think that's one of the biggest numbers of having NFL guys or any NFL team associated with, uh, with the sleep number beds. And, uh, you know, one of the unique things about it, sleep number has partnered up with the NFL to be part of sleep and wellness partner. And so it's great to have them on board um, as being a former player, a Hall of Famer. I have seen numerous uh, things out there that people say that will help you out but I can guarantee you sleep is one of the essential things. And I know personally, it helps my golf game. It helps me get up every morning and uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. Absolutely. And when you were playing in the NFL, uh, how much sleep were you getting per day? Because I'm pretty sure uh, getting that rest is pretty essential. So when you were playing, how much uh, sleep did you get per day? Well, I probably would get about at the most about seven hours because I was more of a player who was, I, I was up early in the morning. I stayed up late watching film. Uh, I was one of the, uh, I guess, a few defensive linemen who was taught by Tony Dungy the importance of film study. And so to me, I took it to heart and uh, I tried to do it every day. I even did it in the off season to help myself to improve. When you're watching film, one of the things people would tell you to do is to, to watch yourself, to improve yourself. But, you know, for me, watching myself, watching my opponents and just kept just kept trying to keep myself refreshed up on, on my opponents in the off season. Absolutely. And you talk about the NFL and sleep number partnering together. Uh, one of the big things with the NFL this year is they extended the regular season to 17 games from 16. They dropped a preseason game. So I want yeah. to ask you, what, did, what are your thoughts on the NFL adding another regular season game? Because I know some players are against it because it, um, the fact that they can increase their chances of injury. So getting that rest is very important. So what are your thoughts on the NFL adding a 17th game? Well, if you look at the way the NFL approaches the NFL seasons now, they're less, much less hitting in right. practice than it used to be. So the guys do more of walkthrough, of, of say more mental practice than physical practice. So adding this one more game, to me personally, by, from watching practice, it's not that big of an addition. But, you know, I can only speak for a retired player. And when you're the, the current guys, they're on a different uh, schedule and they, and they have their opinion. But as for me, I think it's, it's the game has changed so much from back when I was playing where we physically had to practice every day. Mm -hmm. But if it's – but, you know, basically I would say it's up to the current players – and management to figure that out. But as for a fan, I enjoy the game. Having one more game gives myself, other other fans out there, more of an opportunity to watch more games. Yeah, and I think that's one of the big things with the why the NFL has expanded to 17 games. They could go to 18 games yeah. down the road. So we'll see how that goes. And staying on uh, the current NFL season, 
Um, the Minnesota Vikings, you played with them for 11 seasons. Um, they're, if you, depending on what you look at, they're projected to be uh, second place in the NFC North beyond the Green Bay Packers. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Vikings this season? Can they have, what do they need to do in order to surpass the Packers and to overtake the NFC North? Well, first of all, Brian, since I am a former Minnesota Vikings, I always believe in the Minnesota Vikings, of course. no matter what. <laughs> but as for me, for, for Green Bay, we all know that Green Bay is, has a little few issues right now, and AR is definitely one of them. But I think for our organization, for us to be more successful is to come out and winning right off the bat. We know looking at the Vikings schedule, it looks really tough at the end of the season. So I think by having everyone staying healthy, keeping everyone focused on the task at hand and not having any little uh, disagreements or anything, mm -hmm. guys uh, getting in trouble, keeping everybody focused, I think leads to having a successful season. I know back in 1998, when uh, us and me, myself and the Vikings, we all were having a very successful season and, and, and also playoffs. One of the things that derailed us was having some issues that uh, took guys' focus off winning. Yeah. And uh, I think for us, by doing that, it could it would definitely lead to having success. Um, keeping Green Bay having problems, I think Aaron Rodgers should definitely wait another six months to decide to come <laughs> back to the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, you know, I, but I think overall we're on the right track. We've got a lot of guys – that we brought back, uh, we brought in uh, Patrick Peterson. So I look for us to to having a successful season because for me, offense scores points, but we all know defense wins games. No doubt about it. And it, it's interesting that you mentioned the Packers because um, with and specifically Aaron Rodgers, because um, if he's not there with the team, uh, this, at least the start of the season, it could it really just changed the outlook for the Packers uh, in terms of the 2021 season. So um, I wanted to ask you this, um, what are your whole thoughts on the whole Aaron Rodgers situation? Because everyone has their opinion. You know, Aaron Rodgers has talked about uh, recently that uh, he's probably going to figure things out in a couple of weeks. Do you see him re real realistically, do you see him back with the Packers at the start of the 20 2021 season? Well, I, 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 you know, from watching Aaron, you know, uh, first of all, he's, he's the leader of that team. And not having him on that team really kind of puts that team into a funk. You know, you don't mm -hmm. have, not having a guy who's always been there for everybody to look up to. We've seen him play injured and hurt and uh, to take that team to the next level. But I have to say it's kind of a, you know, he's just got engaged, got yeah. the new, new wife. And she's in California. You know, I, I just personally think he should go to California and just stay there with her, you know, and just enjoy the Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive. Mm -hmm. And I think just putting the Green Bay Packers behind him would be a good decision. <laughs> but uh, overall, you know what? I can see him trying to come back. But I think the, one of the issues that came up was when they decided to go draft that quarterback. Yeah. And, we all believe that Aaron Rodgers wanted a, another receiver mm -hmm. and get drafting that quarterback was more or less a slap in the face. And for an organization of the green Bay Packers, you just kind of wonder why would you even do or attempt to do something to Mr. MVP? But you know, that's the green Bay Packers. If they want, they can call me up and I can help make them the decisions <laughs> for that organization. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and staying on the Packers, you had some battles, with, obviously, with the Packers over the years when you playing for the Vikings, specifically with Brett Favre. Um, do you keep in contact with Brett Favre and you stay in contact with him over these years? I keep in contact uh, through Brett through a guy named Frank Winters. I don't want mm, my okay. Viking uh, followers to uh, to think that I have Brett Favre number. So, but uh, <laughs> I talked to Brett through Frank and uh, we were actually talking about trying to get to do a little uh, Packers Viking golf tournament. And, uh, but, you know, Frank, I mean, uh, Brett was a great competitor. He, uh, he and I had many of battles and, uh, you know, it's, it was uh, for me playing in, at, uh, playing in Minnesota is great 
but it's, it was nothing like going to Lambeau Field and playing in such a hostile environment because it's one thing to win at home, but to kick somebody's butt in their backyard and watch the fans leave, I always loved that. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about your NFL career, you accomplished a lot. You were with some really good Minnesota Viking teams, specifically in 98 and 2000. Both of those teams went to the NFC Championship game. But what would you say would be a couple of your favorite moments in your NFL career? Oh, my God. Uh, playing, or, or playing or afterwards, because I have to put in uh, the get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Right. Um, coming – Coming to the Minnesota Viking organization my rookie year and making a team where most people believe that I wouldn't, wouldn't wasn't going to make it. Uh, just just playing overall 14 years in the National Football League for a game where, you know, once again, I wasn't supposed to be here and, and or play for that long, having that longevity of 14 years. So for me, I, I look at it as playing in the National Football League is always an honor and a privilege. And I want every guy out there to realize who, who's playing in it or thinking about playing in the National Football League to realize that it's such an honor and a privilege. And when you get the opportunity to play in it, don't mess it up because there are so many other people out there who wish they could have played in the National Football League and have somebody out there playing and take it and to do a disservice is just, it's just so disrespectful. Absolutely. That is great advice. And you had a really awesome career. I really enjoyed watching you play. Um, and I just wish you all the best. John, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And skull. Skull. There you go. <laughs> hey, guys, for more on John and all your favorite sports stars, be sure to check out popculture.com. <laughs>